Do you read Arabic? Yes, sure. Okay, open Surah Al Maryam and read for us Ayat 71-72. I know. وَمِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا Right? Who goes down there? Allah will take out from there who? The Zalimun. They, they will be kept there, but the ones who have taqwa, they come out, right? Yes. Come out from where? The hellfire, you mean. Oh, so you admit it. So you, you, you'll you be going to hell. Are you okay with that? No, I'm not because uh, that, that means there is something called the Sirat Al-Mustaqeen. You know, no, not al-Mustaqeen. in the Quran. Brother, don't play games with me. I know about the Sirat. That's in your hadith. Not in the Quran. There is yeah. no Sirat in the Quran. Show me the Sirat in the Quran. I can show you Tabari who's going to tell you that according to many companions, this means everyone goes into hell, not the Sirat. I know the Sirat. But even if we go with what you said, if it's about the Sirat, it says he will leave the Zalimun on the Sirat. That's where he's leaving them? No, no, no. Because like they'll, they'll be... Passing, so Where does it say in the ayah they're passing the sirat to get to heaven? It says they're going down to it. Wariduha, they're going down to hell. And the Zalimun will be left there. Where did you get their passing? There is no bridge, Sirat. Now, for those of you who don't know, they say that on the Day of Judgment, there's a bridge called Sirat. Depending on your deeds, you'll probably just fly by like lightning because this is a bridge over hell. Some will be walking slowly. Some will be crawling. Some will fall over. That's in the hadith. That's not what the ayat is talking about because it's talking about the zalimun that will go down in it. They'll be in it and he's going to keep them there. Do you know what, what like oh, the word warada? Yeah, I should, I'll give you 50 million examples where it means to go into it, go to something. I know the word. I'm going to show you the tabari who says it means you're going to go inside. According to Ibn Humayyad, Salama, Muhammad ibn Ishaq, Muhammad bin Jafar al-Zubair, Urwa bin al-Zubair, who said, the Messenger of God sent his expedition to Muta in Jumada 1 of the year 8, 8 Hijri. He put Zayd bin Haritha in command of the men and said, if Zayd bin Haritha is killed, Jafar bin Abi Talib shall be in command of the men. If Jafar is killed, Abdullah bin Rawaha shall be in command. When Abdullah bin Rawaha said goodbye with the other commanders, of the messenger of God who were doing so, he wept, he started crying. This is one of the Sahaba, he's a Sahabi. He started crying. Yes. They said to him, what is making you weep, Ibn Rawaha? He said, by God, Wallahi, I have no love of this world or excessive love for you, but I heard the messenger of Allah, God, and he's gonna recite this ayah, recite a verse from the book of God that mentioned the fire of hell. Not one of you there is, but shall go down to it, that for thy Lord is a thing decreed, determined. I do not know how I can come out after going down. He didn't say cross the bridge. He read the eye saying, see, Allah said, I'm going to go in it. And I don't know if I'm going to come out of it. The ayah says you're going to go into hell. Are you okay with that? No, no, for sure. But I will I will actually do some research about this. Because like the, okay. when I read the Tafatir and this stuff, I like a lot of scholars explaining that people will cross. The yes, I like know the there they'll say that. There are many explanations, but at the same time, in my article, I show you that there were companions of Muhammad who understood, no, we are going inside it. Here, we're going to read Qurtubi. He gives the second opinion because there's more than one. People have differed regarding the meaning of the word wurud. For some say wurud means entry into hell. See, some said enter into it. It is narrated by Jabir ibn Abdullah that he heard the prophet say, wurud is entry, entering not crossing over. There shall not remain a righteous man or sinner who will not enter hell. Did you hear it? He's quoting your prophet. Enter it, not cross over it. For the believer, it will be cool. So now he's saying, oh, don't worry about it. You'll go there, but it'll be like you're vacationing in Alaska. It will be cool and peaceful as it was to Ibrahim. Then we will save those who have avoided evil and greatly torment the sinners in it. Abu Amr gave the chain of transmission to this hadith in his book. So I can give you more, but here again, companions of Muhammad said that yes, it means we go inside, down into it. And there are examples where they interpret it this way. For example, from al darami if you scroll down a little bit, narrated by Abdullah ibn Masood, another Sahabi, who related to the Prophet said, all people will enter Yarud hell, then exit it by their deeds mm. okay okay now let's go to the second one it is narrated that abu abbas said regarding this issue to nafi ibn al azraqi al khariji as for you and i we must enter it as for me allah will then save me from it but for you i doubt he will save you because you lie regarding it many scholars have diligently verified the surety of entry wurud into hell but expressed ignorance about exit from it 
And I've stated so in the book. Now I can go on and on and on. So go look. Don't give me those scholars who say, oh, yeah, but, you know, what do you do? And, you know, can mean this. I'm showing you, companions of Muhammad understood that the word, what do you do? means we go inside it, but only the God fearing come out. Are you comfortable that you're going to go to hell? No, for sure. Okay, uh, well, they told you, you I, going to hell. No, actually, I will, uh, because I'm sure I read actually in Tafsir al baghawi I guess. If you know, if you're familiar with this Tafsir, they say that uh, Wurud means like passing, but I'll do some research about it. But that's, okay, good research. Like, Can you answer the other question related to this? Because it has to do with your salvation. Your prophet was commanded to say, I do not know what Allah will do with me or with you. So I want to ask a question. Why do you pray for Muhammad's peace every time you mention his name? When you say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, translate what that means again. Okay, may Allah like give him the position that's or like the thing that he promised him. It means the prayers of Allah upon him and his peace. You're asking Allah to grant him peace. So why are you asking Allah to give him peace if he's already in peace? Yeah, we believe we, we believe that uh, he's in he has peace for sure because he's a bit human. I would believe, but like as a way of mentioning him with with good things, and also is that will will, will benefit okay. us because uh, that will benefit you. How is it going to benefit you? Yeah, because uh, in the hadith, that I think you, uh, Salah, uh, the Nabi, that's uh, kind of like one of the like good deeds because in your scale. So if you if you're in Salah and you don't pray for Muhammad, will Allah accept your prayer? No, no. You understand what he said? He just told you. It is required of him when he prays five times a day. He has to pray for Muhammad, pray for his peace, or his prayer won't be accepted. But my other question is, in tashahud, when you say tashahud five times a day, you say, As-salamu alayka ahyu nabi, right? Ahyu nabi. Sorry, I'm, my English is bad. My Arabic. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah, Okay, so then you say, peace be upon you, O Prophet, and the mercy of Allah. But yes. you're saying it to him. You're saying, As-salamu alayka, to him, right? Yes. So you are saying it to him. Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. Now you guys heard? He just said, yes. When he prays five times a day, he says to Muhammad, As-salamu alayka. He's talking to him. saying, peace be upon you. So he's talking to him. Now, you're not in Medina, right? No, I'm not. So you're, let's say, in Egypt. So you're speaking yes. to Muhammad, who's in Medina, and you're speaking him to him directly while you're in Egypt? No, no, because no, because like in the hadith it mentioned that anyone who pray who pray yeah. like for the Prophet Muhammad, there is an angel that will carry yeah. a, like the prayer to the Prophet Muhammad in his good. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm glad. I wanted you to say. It. Now the other thing they believe he said it. An angel is assigned to his Prophet Muhammad, who is in the tomb in Medina, and the angel tells him, "So and so said, peace be upon you." So the angel tells Muhammad, so and so just said, peace be upon you. And then he returns your greeting. He says, assalamu alaikum, right? Then he returns your greeting, right? Oh, he, he dropped.